What's up, YouTube? So before we get into this video, um, on Undisputed, Skip and Shannon are talking about uh, Kevin Durant. And I guess he kind of got into it with one of the reporters. I guess one of the media jackals were asking him too many questions about the trade. You know, where, where does he think he's going to be next year? Or, you know, just in general, what's happening? And I guess Kevin Durant got fed up with it and didn't want to deal with it. And I guess he kind of called the guy out. Not to fight or anything, but I think he called him out for, I don't know, probably writing false information about him or something like that. But let's see what they have to say on uh, Undisputed. The grow up part. That's the Mike Dicker, me. Skip. You remember that as Mike Dicker? Mike, why are you so grumpy? Why you care? <laughs> it's, it's a lot. But Chris Broussard still with us. So what do you make of these comments from Katie? Let me say this first of all. I get it from a human standpoint. When you are constantly being criticized, constantly being written about, positively, negatively, all that, constantly being psychoanalyzed, mm -hmm. constantly being speculated about, and some of that speculation and psychoanalysis is wrong. It's all. Okay, so he's absolutely correct. Some of those things that have, are reported are wrong. But you, 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 that goes with the territory. So would you rather, Karen Durant, would you rather be multimillionaire have a shoe deal, be a professional athlete, and, you know, live in a mansion, have the cars, all the glamorous life, but have to deal with the media jackals? Or would you rather be working at McDonald's, have no money, wear flip-flops for shoes all the damn time? I mean, which one do you want? And have no media messing with you? I mean, you can't really have your cake and eat it too. I mean, this is just a no-brainer. We've been hearing about this too much from Kevin Durant. And I'll get deeper into that, uh, more of this in this video. You know, I'm not saying Ethan Strauss was off, but just in general. Right. Some of it is off. It can get to you. I understand that as a human being. But what KD has to understand is whenever you are in a job in the public sphere, whether it's an athlete, an actor, an entertainer, a politician, you get screwed, you get criticized. You get criticized. I've gotten criticized, like... It goes with the territory. Every you, you can't please everybody. Somebody out there is not going to like you, especially at work. You're going to mess with people, bump into people that you don't like. You're going to bump into people that don't like you for whatever reason. Even though you won two rings in a row and you're your MVP two years in a row. Some people just don't like you probably because you need to use a brush. But that's another story. That's definitely another video. So let's keep on going. That's part <laughs> of the job. Yeah. Look at the most powerful man in the world, the president. Whether it was Trump, before him, Obama, they are constantly being criticized, crushed in the media. That comes with the territory. And you get paid handsomely for it. And I know money doesn't solve all problems, but it's a nice consolation. Mm -hmm. And when KD says, I just want to play basketball, no, you don't. If you just want to go to the Y and don't get paid and just be one of these dudes running open gym all day. If that's Ruck, oh, Rucker take up. Right. You want to play basketball. You want to make the millions of dollars. You want to get all the perks and benefits and the, the fame and deal. the women and the shoe deal and all that. All right. This comes with the territory. I get it. it, it it's not fun as a human being, but I get it. it. It comes with the territory. And part of it for KD is knowing who you are. Like a Michael Jordan and a Tom Brady, clearly, they thrive off the... Brady said it, Jordan used to do it. They thrive off the negative. So, with, with, with what he's saying about knowing who you are, it this kind of points to that maybe Kevin Durant might have some type of problem. And it looks like, I'm thinking it probably stems from his childhood, where he may have been insecure, he may not have been uh, very happy, he may have always looked for validation. I mean, because to still be talking about Kevin Durant and his feelings about what somebody said about him in the media, and he's going back and forth to people on Twitter, I mean, that right there, uh, that, that, that stems from something early on. That, that should have been corrected. That's like therapy type stuff. So I, I just don't understand. I think that has to stem from something a little bit deeper than the service area of what's going on now. But let's continue on. Uh, criticism and stuff in the press. Some guys are indifferent to it. 
Other people are so sensitive and their personality, they're a people pleaser. And when they see criticism, it gets in their head and they got all these voices in their head and can't do their job. I think LeBron realized that when after they lost to Dallas, that's when he started going zero dark 30, 23. Is that what he calls right. it during the playoffs off social media? I can't let all this stuff in my head, pay right. attention to it. If I were advising KD, if I was his agent, Rich Kleiman, his boys, whatever, KD, you need he needs to get off social media. Right. Yeah. He needs That's a very good idea. Get off social media. But I would take that a step further. You know, you can go on social media, you can go on Twitter, you can go on Facebook, you go to YouTube, you can look at whatever you want. But just make sure the last thing that you look at is something positive. So that's the last thing burnt into your brain, something positive. Because if you're on social media and the last thing you read is something negative about you, something bad about you, that's going to sit in your brain and fester. So my advice to Kevin Durant, and I'm a nobody, is that if you're going to look at social media, the last thing you look at, make sure it's something good. Make sure it's something good. Let's carry on. To not read the papers. That's impossible. Right. I know he's a millennial, he's right? Addicted. He's addicted. He need, he need to go zero six months. Right. Zero dark it's six making months. him miserable. Crazy, yeah. And you have to know who you are. There are players that play for the Knicks, that play for the Jets and the Giants, that don't read the paper because they don't look at the back page because they know it'll mess with me. KD needs to get off of social media, and that's part of growing up. Mm. Is recognizing who, knowing who you are. Mm. I can't, I can't handle it. Skip. It messes with me. It's making me miserable. Yeah, I'm Skip, You go ahead and go, but can you imagine him in New York? Oh, oh I he should not about that. Look, if he goes there with a Kyrie wow. or somebody else, he'll be okay because they'll be really good. Mm. KD, do not go to New York by yourself. <laughs> and that also applies to any big city, really, because in New York they would tear you up. The media jackals will tear you up, especially if you're not winning, you're not producing, you're not living up to your contract. The media jackals and the fans will tear you up in New York. And same thing in Los Angeles. You bring that garbage down here where you're not winning, you're not playing, you don't like the press, you don't like any of that. It's just, you got a, a rough a rough awakening, especially if you're teamed up with LeBron. And LeBron's the king of drama. So you know the media jackals are going to be all over the place. And LeBron will probably do, throw you under the bus if he had a chance to. So it just doesn't make sense. Like I said, this seems like it stems from something a little bit earlier. It may be Kevin Durant's childhood about not feeling secure, not uh, you know pleasing people and things like that. Because he, he should have learned by now. He definitely should have learned by now. But let's keep going. Because you're not going to win a championship. You're not going to probably won't even be an Eastern Conference finalist if you go by yourself. And they will destroy you. Oh, they will kill you. I thought about so, that. no, don't. you're right, Shan. Don't even think about going to New York if you can't handle it. I've said for years, Kevin Durant uh, is the thinnest-skinned superstar I have ever observed in any sport. But I'm going to treat him now the way I treated Jordan and the way I now treat Tom Brady. I don't care what they did off the floor. I don't care about Brady's Giselle and Ugg boots and the Trump hat. I don't care about any of it. I just care about how you perform. Exactly, Skip. All that really matters is what you do on the court, on the field, whatever your profession is. Everything else doesn't matter. You got to separate the two. And a lot of people can't separate the two from the athlete being on the field and everything he does with that versus the athlete at home or outside being a civilian away from the compound. Some people can't separate that. And that's what needs to be done. Unless what you're doing off the field starts to interfere with what you do on the field, I don't care about it. I only know that Tom Brady is a cold-blooded killer in the clutch in Super Bowl after Super Bowl. He's done it six times with six game-winning drives in the fourth quarter overtime for six rings. Kevin Durant has impressed me greatly as a basketball player in the last two finals where I thought his thin skin would break in the finals. I thought the first finals with Golden State, he was under intense national scrutiny. Everybody in the NBA world was waiting for him to fall. Actually, it might have been, it was probably for the good that Kevin Durant went to Golden State because now he doesn't have to be the top dog. He's got other people around him, and especially a team that's already set up. 
So the meteor jackals aren't going to be him as on him as tough, and he's not going to care as much because there's really general there's really just a team already set up there for him to win. That's basically what happened. So the pressure's not really on. Plus, they know he's not really an alpha male. That probably goes to Draymond Green or Stephen Curry. So the pressure's really off him. So he wasn't really worried about the media. Plus, they were winning. Everything was going good. But now he can't handle the media jackals asking him about what is he going to do next year? Where are you going to play? Are you still friends with Draymond Green? Everything that goes along with that. You, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But let's carry on, Skip. Flat on his face. And he took it over. And he made the shot of shots right in LeBron's face. And then he won back-to-back finals MVPs. Man, that... that that really impressed me because I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. So to me, I told Shannon this earlier, I'm going to tell you this now. The more I watch that rant, it feels contrived. It feels a little premeditated to me because Kevin's always had this weird sort of identity crisis. Am I a good guy or a bad guy? And I think he likes being the bad guy. Remember they tried the shoe campaign for a while back in maybe 2013. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant is not nice. Remember yeah, that? Because right. he was coming across as too nice, yeah. right? So now he just, he loves being the bad guy. And I- well, he might like being a bad guy because being a bad guy is easy. You don't have, if, if you don't want to do something, you can do it. If I don't feel like signing autographs, I can do it. I'm the bad guy. It doesn't matter. Nobody's really going to get mad at me because you know your role. He's a bad guy. So if he does something bad, don't be surprised. If he's yelled at the media jackals, don't be surprised. If he doesn't want to do... Uh, at some type of team, I don't know, meeting someplace, he doesn't want to do it. Oh, well, he's a bad guy. It doesn't matter. It's easy to be a bad guy. But to be a good guy is hard because you always have to be nice. You always have to sign autographs. You always have to, you know, talk to the media jackals, things of that nature. Because one slip up and then that could tarnish your whole, your whole thing. Well, you were a good guy, but now you're an asshole. So they're going to jump on you. Like I said, it's easy to be a bad guy because... The expectations are really low. You do something wrong, hey, he's a bad guy. Whatever. But let's carry on. I think he just took this this what? opportunity. No, just he just seized the opportunity to go on a rant that felt a little over the top. Like he was just waiting for the basketball question because he'd already rehearsed his mind. I'm going to drop the mic at that point. I'm going to walk off. <laughs> and it just felt a little stagey to me because he he thrives on this. He, he lives... On social media because it's it's like his lifeblood. He needs people to he say like, you, you can't. You think he like really? I, because he seems thing. miserable though. No, but Tom I, Brady relishes. I mean, you see Tom Brady's. Yeah, Instagram. he doesn't seem miserable. He relishes it. Jordan I, I, relished it. I, I think I, I think Kevin loves the validation that when when they say KD you better than LeBron or KD you this KD you that, it's the criticism. He's willing to accept the praise and adulation. It's the criticism. But you know when you're great at anything. Skip, even Michael Jordan faced criticism. Right. No matter how great you are. I mean, the best baseball, basketball, whomever, it is, no matter what it is. You- Shannon's completely right. Everybody, you know, everybody gets scrutinized. You know, everybody doesn't like everybody. Everybody's not going to like you. You might not like everybody else. But you still have to deal with it. And what I'm kind of thinking, somebody said a couple of seconds ago that uh, Kevin Durant looks miserable. He might be miserable because deep down inside, he knows that he already went to a team that set up and Draymond Green threw it into his face a month ago. He told he told Kevin Durant on the bench that we don't need you. We were winning before you got here. So if you're soft, you have thin skin, that's really going to get to you. And you're really going to think deep down inside that you know that you went to a team that's pretty much already set up. You have, how many Hall of Famers do you have around you? So, I mean, that might be some of the reason why he looks miserable. The donkey got to him. Let's carry on. To face criticism. So if you're willing to accept the, pr- the praise and the adulation, you got to be willing to take some criticism. Because if you can't, if you only want to hear praise and adulation, it'll wreck you. Mm. It'll wreck you. And KD, at some point in time, it's a part of your job. I, I-, I get it. You want to just do this and... You- but I can assure you, if the if they're not asking Loney questions, right? They're not right. they're not asking Quinn Cook questions. If they weren't asking you questions, you're not got a shoe deal from Nike. 
You're not making 30 million. You don't have a $300 million shoe contract for Nike if they're not, if those reporters are not asking you. And to piggyback off of what Shannon Sharp is saying, you know, if they're not there, then you don't get the deals. They're not reporting on you and talking to you and making your, your face well known out in public. You're not going to get any of the accolades that come with it. For one thing. And for two. Oh, no, I forgot. Let's just keep going. Two questions. Mm. There's a reason why the guys that get the majority. Oh, yeah. I was going to say if I had an old coach, they used to tell a couple of coaches told me that with if we stop talking to you, then that's going to be a problem. Don't get mad because we're always talking to you and trying to push you and just trying to see what's going on. You know, especially with Kevin Durant, the media jackals talking to him, trying to see what's going on. You know, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? When they stop talking to you, that's a problem because that means nobody cares about you. It's really the anything in life. If people stop talking to you, that means they really don't give a damn about you, especially if it's a coach. They're going to move on to somebody else. So be happy the media is talking to you and bothering you. Because it won't always be like this. Let's keep it. Let's carry on. The questions. Those are the guys that make the big bucks. Those are the guys that have the shoe contract. They go hand in hand, KD. I know you understand that. And I know it gets frustrating. But everybody can't just pat you on the back and throw rose petals at you as you walk mm. by. And KD has to understand, like, he went, he he's all over the place with the media. You know, he was talking on podcasts every week. It seemed like he was on a different podcast. And then he went dark, right? Eight days, I think he didn't talk to the media. Right, right after, after the Vegas. Knicks made the trade. That's how like, he played, he fed but into it. Just keep eat. talking, just keep right, talking. And maybe a week from now, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say for you. you know, I ain't got nothing for you. He guys. detonated this. Yes. He's the most accessible Golden right. State Warrior, pre and post game. Yes. He's the one. So like I said in other videos, if you're going to be on social media, if you're going to be looking around and uh, engaging with trolls on the Internet, if it, the last thing you look at, the last comment you look at, make sure it's a positive comment. Because that's going to be the last thing burnt in your head. I know I said this earlier, but that's going to be the last thing burn your head. Don't look at anything negative. Don't let the last thing you look at be negative because you're going to be walking around with that negative feeling and keep thinking about that last comment. So make it positive. Let's keep going. He talks the most. Yeah. Then he drops out of sight right after the... What, what would you yeah. leap to what the you think? That's why some people... I was talking to somebody today in the league that was like, they think this upset him too because it's it's really what he wants to do. Sure. He does want to well, go course. to the Knicks and he will be talking... He's saying Kyrie's one of his closest friends. You know, I know he knows AD. Like, who knows what could be in store with him and somebody else going to New York? Mm, but he... And he doesn't want to ruin the seat this season. That's the right, thing. Right. But it's all because I can think how uncomfortable it must be to walk into that locker room with everybody thinking you're on your way well, out. Well, I know one thing. Draymond's already when you said walk into that locker room. Well, that must feel weird for KD uh, with everybody looking at him like, what are you going to do? Where are you going to be? That must be terrible. But just imagine what the Lakers are going through, except for LeBron. That whole goddamn locker room is going to be cleared out. They're all going to be leaving and possibly going to New Orleans. So imagine how the Lakers feel. So Kevin Durant, you're not the only one. Stop crying. Stop crying. I know what one I'm thinking. I know what one I'm thinking. Draymond? Yes. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. He, saying. he called your guard too. And I ain't talking about a rake. <laughs> that's what he called him. It ain't got nothing to do with me. He said it. To your face. Now that's one thing. Well, I heard such and such said this about you. Get mad. You know, if my grandma said, boy, it ain't what they say behind your back. It's what someone willing to say to your face that will have the most right. the impact on you, Skip Bayless. The man, Skip, how you in the heat of competition? Man, can't, I can't even imagine. I played 14 years. I played college ball. I played high school. I can't imagine a teammate. Now, maybe somebody else from the opposing team say that. You know, okay, I get it. You know, you say things. But a teammate gonna call me that to my face in the heat of competition? Ooh! Oh, shut up, Shannon. You wouldn't do a goddamn thing up there hyping up like you're just going to beat the shit out of everybody in that goddamn locker room. You wouldn't do a damn thing. Plus, you're a little older, too. I mean, that's easy to get arrested and have everything that goes along with that with salt, battery, all that type of stuff, because that shit can spill out into the streets. And you don't want that kind of smoke. So, don't, so stop talking shit, Shannon. Let's keep going.
Got some muscles KD don't have. <laughs> yeah. I have to agree with you. You got some yeah. muscles LeBron doesn't have because the same guy called him the oh, same no, no, word. No, 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 no,